When working on a complex or large drawing, you'll often want to zoom into a spot to get a closer look, zoom out to see the bigger picture, or pan to a specific spot. In this video, I'll show how to navigate around your drawings with the zoom and pan tools. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. While any tool is active, I can always zoom in and out with my mouse scroll wheel. The location of the cursor sets the zoom center, so it's easy to zoom in on a particular location or object. Similarly, when zooming out, the view shrinks toward my cursor. Pressing the F4 key will bring back everything in the drawing window, including any objects outside the page boundary. The keyboard shortcuts Control plus and Control minus, or Option plus or minus on the Mac, can also be used for zooming in and out, also based on where my cursor is. The zoom tool itself can be accessed by the toolbox icon or by pressing the Z shortcut. By default, clicking once will double the zoom level wherever I click, and right-clicking once will zoom out by half. Dragging on marquee will zoom to the marquee contents. The current zoom level is listed in the property bar, which I can change, and there are also options for zooming in and out and zooming to all objects. I'll press the spacebar to temporarily switch to the pick tool, and I'll select the objects I want to zoom in on, either by clicking with the shift key pressed or by dragging a selection marquee. Pressing the spacebar again goes back to the zoom tool, and I'll click Zoom to Selected, whose shortcut is Shift F2. This is a multi page document, so I'll open the Pages Docker or the Pages Inspector on the Mac by choosing Window, Dockers, Pages. Clicking the Multi Page View icon displays all pages in a grid. The Zoom tool is still active, and to see all pages at once, I'll click Zoom to All Pages in the property bar. I can also zoom to include the entire current page, or zoom to include the entire page width or height. I'll go back to single page view. Panning means moving or shifting the drawing while maintaining the same zoom level. To activate the pan tool, I'll click the small arrow at the bottom right of the zoom icon, which opens the tool group flyout, and I'll click pan. The H shortcut key would do this as well. Now I can drag the drawing to the spot I want to see. For PC users, scrolling the wheel with the Alt key pressed will pan vertically, and with the Shift key pressed will pan horizontally. There's also a time-saving shortcut for a quick pan. If I'm in any other tool, such as Rectangle, I can temporarily switch to quick pan mode by holding down the middle mouse wheel or button and dragging in the drawing window. Once I release the middle mouse wheel or button, I'm back in the Rectangle tool. Another handy option for panning, while any tool is active, is the Navigator, the small icon at the lower right corner of the workspace. Clicking and holding this icon displays the nano preview of the entire drawing, and I can drag to place what I want in the current view. To adjust some of the zoom and pan properties, I'll choose Tools, Options, Tools, and open the Zoom Pan tab. Here I can change what right-clicking does for both tools, change the zoom centering or ratio, or calibrate the zoom to use real-world units. Finally, if I want to save specific views, I can open the Views Docker. The icons along the top are the same as those that appear in the property bar when the zoom tool is active, and I can click the Add icon to save the current view. To change the view name, I'll click the default name and overwrite. Now, from wherever I am in this drawing, I can click the view name to return to it. Saved views are also page dependent. If I switch pages and go back to the saved view, the correct page will open. As long as the page with the saved view is the active page, saved views can also be accessed from the Zoom Levels dropdown in the standard toolbar. And while the Zoom tool is active, the property bar has this field as well. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the Zoom and Pan tools in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.